Let me uh, thank you, Daniel, and, and your team, uh, Joan, Daria. You created an event which now is on everyone's calendar, not just in Greece, but uh, I think uh, pan-European, so congratulations. Now, uh, I usually focus mostly on banking, but in, uh, in a world of such high uncertainty, unfortunately, or fortunately, banking and macro are interlinked in a way that I need to focus my remarks mostly on, on the macro and in Greece, where I am cautiously optimistic, as are the other two speakers, and let me explain why. First of all, first of all on energy supply and security, Greece has very low dependency on Russian natural gas, only around 5% of its total energy consumption. This can be substituted by reduced consumption, which we should all be doing, and I recommend that as a man who lived through the crisis of the 70s, who knows what uh, reduced energy consumption means um, in each household. We can increase lignite production of electricity in the short run, and clearly Greece, as the minister said, has a huge pipeline of renewable energy sources, and we should be increasing our production of electricity from renewables from around 40% today to 50% very quickly in the next couple of years. <clears throat> Second, we will not see a very large decline in real disposable income. And let me explain why. We have a fiscal policy, which the minister described, and we also have the momentum that has been created for the economy in the past few years, and we should see good employment numbers, employment growth numbers. Let me start with the fiscal. The government has designed a very smart policy which should cover around two-thirds of the energy costs of low-income households. Low income are defined as monthly wages of around 1,000, 1,100. Employment growth, which should is in double digits in the first quarter and should be about 4% for the full year, combined with wage increases of around 3%, should offset the residual amount of the energy costs as well as a large chunk of the higher food prices. So I think our estimates internally are that real disposable income should not suffer large declines in 2022. 2023, different question. We also have a negative terms of trade shock from energy, but people don't understand or don't forget that we have a positive terms of trade shock from tourism. Tourist prices are up 10 to 15 percent this year. It's our largest industry and offset tremendously the impact from the energy crisis. We also have large volumes of tourism. This year will be the best year by far for Greek tourism. Firms are profitable. Profits of firms as measured from the national accounts data seem to be at historic highs and should be able to absorb the increase in uh, input costs. Why are we different from the rest of Europe? Why isn't the rest of Europe seeing the same things? A, we're in a different phase of the cycle. Greece has been hardened by almost over a decade of restructuring, coming from the Greek crisis, the pandemic, etc. So the firms that are left are the hardened veterans. They can survive most shocks better than more flabbier firms in other countries. Collateral values, which is a key driver of activity, are at lows. We had a 6% decline in real estate values during the crisis. We are nowhere near having recovering, so we are at undervalued real estate prices. Also, the crisis has led to low leverage in firms. Firms in Greece, the performing firms, are under leveraged, and I'll get to that later when I talk about the banks. And finally, on the fiscal, I won't repeat what the previous two speakers said. Inflation leads to good tax buoyancy along with activity. The debt also leads to good debt dynamics. We always need a little bit of inflation to reduce the debt rapidly. And as Mr. Regling said, we do not have a problem on servicing the debt. Only 40 billion are tradable GGBs, and the debt service on the GGBs is ex as well as the, as the European debt is a few billions in the next couple of years. So 
this all supports low risks of fragmentation for the Greek debt. In, a good, in, 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 the, in the baseline scenario I just described, banks will have a good year. We'll be financing investments, corporate loan growth is in double digits, and, it, and the pipelines are strong. We also have the RRF funds, which we will channel, and then there will be the RRF grants that will go directly to the economy, and it's about three and a half billion this year and four and a half billion next year. So all this is the good baseline scenario. In a bad scenario, the banks are in solid state. NPEs, and I don't like the ratios because I think the denominators are, are small. NPEs, net of provisions, are only six billion. Less than 30% of set one capital. Six billion. It sounds 12% but it's only six billion in an economy of 180 billion. Profitability has improved for banks and its core profitability, excluding trading gains, et cetera, close to 10% of set one capital. Very strong profitability. So far, many months into the crisis, zero delinquency increases in the, in the early buckets, zero to 30, 60, uh, 30 to 60. So firms seem to be performing well. And even if we have the increase in, we will have the increase in ECB rates, 150 base points, 200 base points over the next 12 to uh, 18 months. The low leverage, loans to GDP, 55%. Even with 200 base points, that's only about 1% of GDP higher debt service per year can be fully absorbed by the profitability that I mentioned, which will increase by about 4 billion this year. So I'm very, Cautiously optimistic, even the downside. So to conclude, Greece seems to be outrunning the bear market recession, and the key <coughs> risk is that the Russian bear doesn't upset things down the road.